Would you make it shallow So I can feel the rain Great Stonewall, 1903 to 1954. She lost both of her babies in the second grade. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the Iowa caucus kicking off the 2016 election campaign. I'm David Knight. With me are Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. We're going to be covering this as the results come in. Now, they have just started the caucus at this moment. 7 o'clock Central Time is when the Iowa caucus begin. They expect this year they're going to have results early, and that's something we're going to talk about is, is what the caucus process is. And, of course, Microsoft's involvement in this. We're also going to look back at uh, the history of the Iowa caucus. We're going to look at, back at what has happened in the last couple of weeks with uh, the debates with the candidates. It's going to be a little bit more than just a horse race comparison. But, of course, this is now the actual horse race begins. Yeah. This is uh, beyond the push polls, beyond all the pundits handicapping everybody. So now tonight it begins. Yeah, well, this will be very exciting. I know there's a lot of uh, first-timers out there at the caucus that can't wait to to be heard and have their voices raised there. And um, we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of peer pressure going on. I guess that's how the, the Democratic caucuses go. It's more kind of you pressure your groups into voting for yours. Or uh, in the Cruz camp, you send out peer pressure mailers. To <laughs> Phony, phony mailers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we'll also have Richard Reese, who's on the ground out there in Iowa, so he'll have a chance to give right. us uh, eyewitness take and also talk to the great viewers who are actually out there in the area. That's right. Now, tonight, we're going to take a look quickly at the difference between the Republican and Democrat caucuses, as uh, Leanne just pointed out. It's a little bit different between the Republicans and the Democrats. When they get together in a uh, meeting facility, the people in the small areas, as uh, either Republican or Democrat, you can register at the door. And I think that's going to be pretty important because I think there's going to be a lot of Reagan Democrats who are going to be uh, crossing over to vote for Donald Trump. And I think that's going to be um, something that's really going to be important tonight. Now, basically what they do for the Republican Party, they separate everyone and you can speak for your particular candidates. Uh, they have uh, people stand up representing each one of the candidates. And then they just have a secret ballot vote. Uh, they put those in the boxes and then they count those and then they transmit that to the state party. For the Democrats, though... It's a little bit different. You want to tell us about that, Leanne? Well, we've got the uh, total number of voters at the caucus. They're counted. The voters gather in a large room. They talk amongst themselves, and they convince one another how their candidate's the biggest, the baddest, he's the best one. And then they're asked to, to vote by grouping into little collectives of this mm -hmm. is who I choose, this is who, who I choose. They can also stand in an undecided group at first. Uh, the number of people in each group is then counted off. Uh, any candidate that doesn't have at least 15% of the total headcount is removed. Then they have a realignment phase. So it's basically like musical chairs yeah, is yeah. how they're doing this voting. It, it very much reflects the differences between the two parties as well. I, I think um, what you have with the Democrat process, again, they, they break into areas like this one in particular. There'll be four areas. There's, there's three candidates and then undecided. So, mm -hmm. so everybody's going to go into their little quadrants. And then they're, I guess they're going to be kind of... Uh, talking and yelling and trying to convert people. <laughs> yeah. Sounds kind of like Come a Chicago trade, uh, yeah. board trade thing. I don't know what the deal it's is. It's a very it, interesting but. thing. And uh, as uh, we've been talking about, and I know you've been talking about this a lot, David, how Microsoft is actually involved in counting the votes. Mm -hmm. And we have a uh, article here from Paul Joseph Watson. Microsoft calls Iowa for Hillary before it helps count the votes. So they're already <laughs> saying that Hillary is going to be the winner or the uh, expected winner. And they say how they've run down numbers on other things such as... Uh, award shows and things like that, tallying the votes and uh, people's opinions. So we'll see if that comes into play at all. That's you know, always, like, whose opinion? Yeah, it's another way to push the voters' perceptions. It's right. very important for them to do that. And, of course, that's what all these polls are about. You see radical differences in a lot of these different polls because 
the Republican Party will have its own polling organizations, and the Democrats will as well. They get different results, and we've seen radically different polls versus the election process uh, many times in the past. But when you look at what Microsoft is doing, I really don't understand the need for it. Mm. Now, they're saying we had to do this because look at the mess that we had back in 2012, where first Romney was pronounced the winner, then we had Santorum pronounced the winner, but, you know, everybody thought that it was going to be Ron Paul because he was the one that had the big crowds, and nobody, right. was, especially Santorum, nobody was showing up uh, with Santorum to follow him. So I looked at that, and I thought, yeah, this is kind of rigged, but they, they changed the, the winner from Romney to Santorum, and, the, you know, it was only eight votes apart between them and so forth. What they're saying is, is that that all happened not because they were playing games in the Republican Party. And, of course, we saw a lot of suspicious uh, and fraudulent, obviously fraudulent behavior in subsequent primaries and caucuses where they had, um, I think it was in Maine, where they were phoning in the results and the people who had phoned it in to the, the party after the state party had uh, posted it said, that's not what we called in. Mm -hmm. And so there right. was a lot of that sort of thing. But in Iowa, what they were doing is basically uh, counting the votes and then uh, sending it in with a touch-tone phone. And they said, well, they're they're not pushing the buttons right, that, that creates errors. And it's like, well, that's really easy to, to correct, isn't it? You can do a voice uh, message for them, okay? You can use <laughs> well, a fax. Code out of the <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You could use a fax. You could use a text. You could use uh, email. Maybe Hillary could help them do the emails. Right. But, you know, why is it <laughs> that they have to have this uh, special app on a phone or a pad from Microsoft? And I don't think they're really going to mess with it this time. Mm -hmm. They're going to gain people's trust with it this time until people don't really have a secondary auditing of this and really pay much attention and then at that point they can play some games when it's close right well like there was the huge scandal with the voting machines and how the, uh, romney's son, son. had ties mm -hmm. to the voting machines but then we see every election cycle there are issues with that where people who are have been long dead for a long time have voted and yeah and other issues like that um so none of these things the glitches that we see with technology in general there's a huge issue and that that's what's going to be tallying your votes. Why do we need to have electronic tabulation of this? Mm. I mean, this is something that is important enough. We can take the time to do it with paper trails that can mm. be audited. Or if you want to get electronic, then let's have a system where we can uh, audit and, and see how we voted. Mm -hmm. yeah, see so if our vote is recorded. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but I have they, a receipt that's printed up, something like that. Right. But Bev Harris has said, hey, it's just paper slips. And people counting them and people watching them counting them. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, there's a lot of different places where fraud can come in. You can have fraudulent voters uh, with bad ID that's not checked. You can have ballot stuffing. Uh, and that can happen either at the polling place or it can happen while it's in transition. So you have to have somebody checking the custody of the votes until they are counted and audited mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different places where they can, uh, can, can mess with this. This just adds one more aspect right. that I think is totally unnecessary. Well, and they, they, I know with these voting machines, they have it to where whoever is running the precinct, they're supposed to be the only ones with access to the machines. And last time around, they had left them open. So anyone yeah. could get, on, get in there and change the numbers. Same sort of thing could happen with the back end of an app. Yeah. So if you really want to prove that you know you, nothing nefarious is going on, uh, leave it open. Have it when open. Also, we've seen, uh, I was going to chime in and say also we've seen uh, Project Veritas. They got the voting ballot for Eric Holder, you know, up in Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. So these things are very far <laughs> from perfect. Uh, you know, we don't have any type of verification or, as you were saying, David, ways to go back and double check. As you mm -hmm. pointed out, Leanne, people who have been dead are actually voting in elections <laughs> currently. It's uh, completely ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, when they make it electronic, then what you've done is you've introduced a whole new set of problems on top of what you would normally have. There could be errors in the software itself, or there could be malicious hacking mm -hmm. anywhere along the stream. And, of course, uh, you know, who would think that in politics somebody would maliciously hack something? I mean, it's like, who would imagine? <laughs> That's almost like being so paranoid that you would think somebody would be looking to find the Secretary of State's emails. I mean, who, who would want to look at her emails right. other than pretty much every other government on Earth? Yes. So, uh, you know, I would be concerned and about Lucifer that. And and others. We'll get to more on that later. Well, and, and I think it's interesting when they, they call the winners, they called uh, the first four primaries for Donald Trump is what Microsoft uh, is believing. They think he's going to run all of them. Of course, this uh, month in January, we have the Iowa caucus and New Hampshire. Then we have South Carolina, then Nevada. And then we have a slew of states that are going to be voting in March. Uh, but they've said the first four would be a run up for him. And of course, that's the importance of these things. Uh, is trying to create a perception with the donors, with the voters, of who's in front.
Right. And, and that's as you said, it's a perception. Yeah. Right. You know, just like when we saw Ron Paul in the last election, they try to keep up the perception that he didn't have any support, even yeah. though he would go out to these uh, college universities, he'd have the largest crowds by right. far. But uh, nobody showed up for Ron. Right. And I yeah. know that Alex did a report there in 2012 about them actually giving his votes to another candidate. A yeah. huge scandal there. And, you know, just whatever. He didn't even exist. He wasn't even shown on the polls there on MSNBC or CNN. Like well, so they're exist. they're promising tonight that we're going to have the returns fairly quickly. So the caucuses uh, started at 7 o'clock. They're saying they think returns are going to start coming in at about 7.30. So we're going to keep you advised as to what happens with that. Now, the interesting thing is, is that as this is um, coming to fruition, we see that uh, as some of the favorite establishment candidates like uh, Jeb Bush are falling by the wayside, mm. uh, the the uh, donors are starting to move to uh, Rubio and to Ted Cruz. And who is it that we have on the line? We have Richard? Richard Reeves. Let's go to Richard Reeves in Iowa. He's there on the ground. Yes, sir, David. And I'll have to speak quietly because the caucus is underway here. We are at Fair Meadows Elementary Gym in West Des Moines, Iowa at a Republican caucus. The precinct chair is currently administering the meeting and they are starting their business. They opened up with a pledge of allegiance and uh, it, it won't be long and we'll be seeing some voting happen right here in Fair Meadows, West Des Moines. Very interesting. Uh, Richard, they're going to be putting, uh, they're going to have some people that are going to be speaking, is that correct? Uh, for each of the candidates, that's what I understand. And then they will take a, a, a ballot and uh, stick that in the ballots, is that correct? That is correct. They're supposed to have speakers, uh, theoretically, for each candidate. I suspect that there may be a few candidates maybe don't have speakers, but I think they, they allowed two to five minutes per speaker, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. We should have that start up here, I guess, pretty soon. Mm -hmm. uh, about, about how many people are there? Is it a big turnout, or is it considered or is a big turnout? Uh, they've got the gym full here, and I know... Oh, yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah, at this elementary school... This elementary school, they've also got a Democratic uh, caucus going on in another part of the school. And they were lined up outside the door, out the front door there. Um, so I think the turnout on both sides is going to be pretty big, David. You know, the, the Democrat one might actually be more interesting uh, because that's where they, they don't have a secret ballot. They just basically kind of... Uh, uh, negotiate back and forth trying to convert each other as they're standing there yeah and we know a lot of people are feeling the burn it might be a, yeah, a lot of peer pressure a lot of a lot of herd mentality uh, <laughs> type of things like you always see the democrats doing well i think it could hurt hillary real bad because as if we were talking about earlier on the infowars program with alex um the martin o'malley small percentage they they're not going to be able to stay in their little corner they've got to either go home or decide to caucus for Bernie or Hillary, and I think the majority of Martin O'Malley support will go to Bernie. Yeah. And then I'm not even talking about the undecided. Uh, I think the undecided, uh, you know, if they're undecided at this point, then, you know, they're not liking Hillary. So I think yeah. the majority of undecided, uh, after it's all said and done, the majority of undecided and the Martin O'Malley faction, I think it's going to go to Bernie. That could just be what Bernie needs to put him over. And wow, wouldn't that be something? I, I think we're going to see a... a uh, I think we're going to see a shakeup in Iowa. I think Hillary It'd be interesting. is going to make it out of Iowa as the victor. I think she'll be number two. It would be interesting because uh, if, if she loses Iowa and she's quite a bit behind in New Hampshire, uh, even if she wins in South Carolina, that, that starts to take momentum away from her. Even if she wins that, I mean, if we wind up with, uh, with uh, Sanders and Trump, Bloomberg has promised that he will come into the race. So then things will really oh, start to get no. crazy. Wow. Now that you bring that up, I mean, it's too bad I'm in this location because what I would do right now is I would just do my Bob Barker imitation from The Price is Right. <laughs> Come on down. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So to, to get a sense of it, then you would say then that looks like from what you're seeing there at that uh, school that there's heavy turnout because they were concerned in some places there was going to be uh, uh, heavy weather with blizzard or whatever. And, and it's, it's very dependent on uh, the turnout as to which candidates look to do well. Many people think that Trump and Sanders will benefit from a heavy turnout. Well, it looks like the weather's held off, at least here getting to West Des Moines. Uh, it's 33 degrees, foggy, but not, uh, not any real precipitation, just a little bit of foggy mist. Now, in western Iowa, potentially where that front's coming in from, from the Omaha, Nebraska direction, uh, they're supposed to see this front first, and I haven't tracked the status of that front, but potentially in western Iowa, there's uh, a little bit of a problem. But uh, 
probably at least three quarters to two thirds of the state should be uh, good to go. There shouldn't be any problems as far as people getting to their caucus locations. So it's Western 